America has sent a, quote, resolute and balanced message over the crisis on the Korean Peninsula, according to South Korea's vice foreign minister. But that seems to contradict earlier statements from Seoul that were critical of Washington's response to the North Korean missile threat. Caleb Mopin's got more. Before Donald Trump had even taken office, he'd already laid out a clear strategy for dealing with threats to America. We are totally predictable. We tell everything. We're sending troops, we tell them. We're sending something else, we have a news conference. We have to be unpredictable. Well, South Korea, Washington's key partner in Asia, didn't bank on the tactic also being used on them. We think that now the, the American government has moved from strategic patience of Obama administration into strategic confusion. Well, here's where that confusion might be coming from. Let's see if we can follow the Trump team's statements over the course of about a week. They will be met with fire and fury. I think Americans should sleep well at night. I have no concerns about uh, this particular uh, rhetoric of the last few days. Frankly, uh, the people that were questioning that statement, was it too tough? Maybe it wasn't tough enough. This president will no longer put up with appeasement. Okay, nobody loves a peaceful solution better than President Trump, that I can tell you. We continue to be interested in finding a way to get to a dialogue, but that's up to him. Following these mixed messages from Washington, the unpredictable has certainly happened. The tensions have now got Pyongyang and Seoul somewhat agreeing with each other. The U.S. should first show through actions if they wish to ease tensions on the Korean peninsula and prevent a dangerous military clash. Our government will put everything on the line to prevent another war on the Korean peninsula. And when it comes to the question of whether or not the United States wants to resolve the Korean nuclear issue peacefully, Seoul says that it is on the same team as Washington. The South Korean government and the U.S. government don't have a different position on the peaceful resolution of the crisis. But can South Korea really be sure, given that it's rather unclear what exactly Trump really wants? This is because there's no policy. Um, this is because Trump doesn't sit down with his cabinet and say, OK, let's strategize. Um, for the contingencies that we've got. And then once we've got this, this policy, uh, then we all adhere to that policy and our public, uh, our public statements reflect that. That doesn't go on. I mean, the president makes a statement and he doesn't consult anybody, he doesn't warn anybody. And then you do catch up um, with the secretary of state trying to settle nerves and then, of course, the Defense Department gets jealous of the State Department. This is what happens when nobody's in control. You have to wonder if South Korea isn't starting to get just a little bit annoyed. After all, their lives hang in the balance as the White House word games continue. Caleb Maupin, RT, New York. Meanwhile, North Korea has backed away from an earlier threat to strike an American target, saying it's willing to wait but the U.S. is now planning a joint military exercise with South Korea. Former Pentagon official Michael Maloof thinks these drills will further aggravate the situation on that peninsula. There is going to be an impending uh, South Korean-U.S. Uh, military exercise within the next week or so. If South, Korea, if South Korea is sincere, maybe they should postpone to, as a signal to North Korea that they are sincere about de-escalating uh, tensions on the peninsula. I haven't heard that yet. And, uh, and what I'm concerned about is if they proceed with that, those military exercises, that will be yet another uh, catalyst for Kim Jong-un to start rattling the sabers again.